Hello everyone. Today in this we will be revising chapter 6 song. So let's start the class. So what is sound children? Sound is actually a form of energy which we have already discussed in the class, right? That produces the sensation of hearing in our ears. So this is what we have discussed about sound next let's uh, revise again what and all uh, topics we have covered under sound see children we in our daily life hear different types of sound right sound of a bird sound of a bell sound of a horn all different sounds even different persons uh, are having different uh, sound which is produced uh, by different voices i mean we hear the different voices of different persons and different sounds produced by different animals also <clears throat> so we can say it is a form of energy right it produces the sensation of hearing in our ears so these are the vibrations next how sound is produced so the next one is it is produced due to vibration if the body is vibrating then it produces sound right see uh, for example if you say a motion of a swing and motion of a pendulum if you take a pendulum so how the pendulum swing it moves to and fro to and fro right so in this motion the body from its rest position moves to one side and comes back to the rest position so that means this is known as to and fro motion so this process will when it is repeated again and again so such type of motion is known as oscillatory motion right this we have discussed okay so what is oscillatory motion uh, the body assumes a new shape during its motion is called see oscillatory means the motion is repetitive if the motion is repetitive at a regular interval of time it is oscillatory motion but if only the part of body is oscillating keeping the other parts fixed then that becomes vibratory motion okay in vibratory motion what happens only a part of body is vibrating and the other parts are fixed whereas in the oscillatory motion what is happening the motion of the body is repetitively repeatedly at a regular interval of time okay so we can say that sound is produced when the body is vibrating let's see some examples uh, see here this activity you take a, a ruler and place it one end on the table just uh, uh, take your left hand as shown here in the figure and pull down the other end of the ruler with the right hand and then leave it when you release it what you will notice children the ruler starts vibrating and after some times the ruler stops vibrating automatically that means when it stops vibrating no sound will be heard but when it is vibrating sound will be heard okay so this is uh, one of the example likewise we have so many examples uh, you can take a rubber band also cut that rubber band uh, into a string and hold one end of the string in your mouth under the teeth and the other end in your hand suppose that this is the rubber band one end is uh, fixed near the mouth and one is free so when you stretch it so these are the two points of the stretch rubber so when you stretch it and you pluck it from the middle when you pluck it from the middle so what happens you will see some vibration so these are the vibrations it is moving to and fro so here also the sound is produced likewise you can go for the musical instruments also the vibrating membrane of drum produces sound next vibrating string produces sound okay so many examples are there understood so likewise we can have other examples also so let's see what are the sources of sound okay the next one is sources of sound let's see here so in this slide you see children different sources of sounds given first one is the tuning fork okay 
next is the musical instrument and third one is a human being so let's first discuss the tuning fork what is a tuning fork it is a u shape see this is a u shape metallic piece with a stem this is known as stem or sometimes we can call it as handle also because we will hold it from here right and these two are known as the prongs these are the prongs and they are set into vibrations when either of the two prongs is actually struck gently on a rubber band okay when you will gently rub it on a rubber band sound will be produced clear so this is one way uh, uh, we can produce sound by using the tuning fork now let's see how the musical instrument produces the sound okay so next slide is this so here we have the musical instrument any musical instrument we can take children so here uh, see if i talk about all musical instruments they produce sound due to vibration right uh, like flute uh, clarinet whistle so here they are in the form of pipes so they produce sound when air is blown for example uh, let me draw a flute suppose this is a flute so different different holes are here okay these are the air columns that means the column of air inside them vibrates and then it produces the sound okay next here you see other example musical instruments like we have harmonium uh, organ mouth so there when we uh, they produce uh, sound when air is blown in them likewise you take string instruments like here i have shown guitar so this is a string instrument so here uh, if you plug the string of this guitar then it produces the sound likewise you see the membrane this is a drum when you beat the drum the membrane starts vibrating so this membrane of the drum vibrates produces the sound so different different musical instruments produces different way different ways of producing sound okay next we have human being how human being produces sound see human being produce sound when our vocal cord cords vibrate on blowing the air through them by our lungs so see in this figure these are the vocal cords and this is known as the larynx so basically what happens here see our throat has a larynx here everybody has that so the voice is produced in this larynx only so this is also known as sometimes voice box this larynx is sometimes called as voice box so actually it is designed to produce voice so it is a box like structure with walls of some tough tissues are here if you can see here <clears throat> so inside this we have two folds these are the two folds of tissues okay so when we breathe the vocal cords becomes loose and the gap between them increases okay when we talk or shout or sometimes we sing so these cord becomes tight and hence they start vibrating and they produces sound clear so this is how the part of our body the body produces sound so we can feel these vibrations also children you know when you keep your uh, finger on the throat here when you keep it on uh, your finger on the throat and when you speak you can feel some vibration so that is how the sound is produced sometimes you know some animals like birds uh, frogs and all they also produce sound due to vibration of their vocal cords but uh, you know we have one uh, we have talk about the bees you know bees do not have voice boxes they do not have voice box how do they produce sound they produce sound by moving their wings they move their wings up and down very fast so this is how the bees produce sound okay so this is all about the sources of sound so now let's see the next one next we have sound needs a medium for propagation of course sound needs a medium for its propagation so this also we have discussed so let us see once again how uh sound needs a medium for propagation see children sound uh, cannot travel through vacuum it cannot travel through vacuum 
because it needs a medium some medium should be there then only the sound can be produced so let us understand this within some this experiment bell jar experiment here we have taken a, a electric bell an air tight glass jar this is bell jar uh, which is connected to a vacuum pump this is a vacuum pump right and here we have suspended the electric bell inside this jar as you can see this setup now when you connect the bell to a battery through the switch and what happens on pressing the switch the bell starts ringing and the sound is heard the sound reaches us through the air in the jar okay so now when you start this vacuum pump what happens slowly slowly the air will evacuate from the jar and what you will notice the sound becomes feeble feeble means very weak after sometimes when there is no air left in this uh, jar no sound is heard okay however the hammer of this electric bell will still seen striking the gong but we cannot able to hear the sound the reason is that there is no air there is no air medium okay so if there is no air in the jar so there is no medium for the sound to reach us so we cannot able to hear any sound so thus we can say that sound needs a medium for its propagation see uh, this also we have discussed if you go to the moon or in space there is no atmosphere yes there is no atmosphere there so there two persons cannot talk we cannot able to hear each other okay so this is uh, one of the activity uh, which shows that sound actually needs a medium for its propagation likewise we have so many activities like uh, you can take uh, you know you can make your own telephone you take two ice cream cups like this we have taken two ice cream cups we have tied them with a string see in the first situation if the string is not straight then you cannot able to hear the sound okay but when the string is straight suppose in this situation the string is straight so here sound will be heard okay you can able to hear your friend sound so this shows that sound actually travel through this thread this is the thread or a string which reaches you so they can travel through solid also with this we can say that sound can travel through solid of course they can travel through liquids and gases also so different different examples are there uh, like uh, if we talk about liquids uh, you can see the sound can travel through liquids how you can take a balloon and fill the water in that and hold that near to your ear now when you keep the watch gently to to the other side of the balloon you can be able to hear the ticking or ticking sound of the watch okay this is one example another one is sound can also travel to air see you ask your friend to ring a bell so what you will notice the sound of the bell can be heard from any place near the bell so this shows that sound travels in air also okay uh next we have a uh, sound travels in air in the form of longitudinal wave so let's see this okay so here you see children we have read that sound is a form of energy right because it produces when a body is vibrating so during the vibration what happens the kinetic energy is changing into potential energy and the potential energy again changes to kinetic energy right so the sound energy in the air is actually transmitting from one form to another by wave motion this is the wave motion okay this is the wave so in wave motion what happens the particle of the medium do not leave their mean positions but they vibrate about their mean position this is very important point children whenever the sound is traveling in a medium the particles of the medium will not move they will not leave their place but they will move to and fro see here i have written the particles of air vibrate to and fro about their mean positions only but if they are traveling in the direction of propagation of sound then it is known as the longitudinal wave okay clear so here you see such vibrations of particles in the air are in the direction of propagation of sound and they form the longitudinal wave like this so in this longitudinal wave children see there are different points i have given c for compression r for rarefaction okay so 
here if you see like this this can also be drawn like this so this is the compression and these are the refraction again compression again refraction so what is the meaning uh, of this the point c on either side of which the particles of air move towards the point c is called the compression okay and the point r on either side of the particles of air move away from the point r is called the refraction so the uh, so these are by arrows you can show like this they move to and fro okay so one wave is from a one wave is from a compression to the next compression that means compression to compression makes one wave like this so a longitudinal wave graphically can be represented by this so this is the displacement on the y axis and this is the distance you consider this is the distance on the x axis and so from here to here is one wave and this is lambda gives you the wavelength there is another way to represent the uh, longitudinal wave so what is that see here you can represent it displacement time graph so this is the displacement on the y axis we have a time on the x axis okay so this is the amplitude and see here which this uh, graph represents the displacement of particles of the medium with time at a given position so here in this displacement time graph the time of one wave is represented by letter t so this is called the time period of the wave okay so this is what we have discussed these graphs are very important you need to practice them okay children and uh, the remaining uh, important terms related to the waves like amplitude what is an amplitude it is the maximum displacement of a wave on either side that means from its mean to extreme position next what is a wavelength how do we define a wavelength it is a length of a wave corresponding to one vibration it is represented by lambda this is known as lambda next what is the frequency it is the number of vibration produced by a source frequency represented by f number of vibration produced by a source in 1 second so its si unit is hertz symbol is h to the okay so these are some important terms related to the wave i hope this is clear this we have already discussed okay next let's see uh, the next one is let's go to the next slide almost we are done with this so children just go through these topics again uh, okay and the question answers already given to you go through them and practice the diagrams which we have already discussed that's all for this session thank you